how much work is done by a machine in lifting a mass 1 kg through a height of 5 meters. So work is force times distance. We're going to calculate that. So work is equal to force times distance. So the work will be equal to the force which is what the force we are given one kg which is the mass so the force will be mg then the distance which is the height mgh so the work will be one kg times 10 newtons per kg which is the gravitational pull times the height which is five the work will be equal to 50 joules so the answer is a one question 11. a farmer has two ox cuts the ox cuts have the same weight, but one has four narrow wheels and the other has four wide wheels. In rainy weather, which ox cut sinks more into soft ground and why? First of all, it's a practical example. This is a wide wheel. Let's take bicycles as examples. When you are riding a bicycle with narrow wheels, it will sink more in the, in the mud than the one with, with wide wheels. But what is the explanation there? So first of all, it's this one which will sink more into the soft ground, the narrow one. But why? Because they're talking about pressure here, greater pressure on the ground, less pressure on the ground. What is the formula for pressure? Pressure is force over area. So the pressure is inversely proportional to the area. So when the area increases, then the pressure decreases. When the area increases, the pressure reduces. And then the, when the area decreases, the pressure increases. So, since the area is, is small in a narrow wheel, the area covered by the narrow wheel is smaller, then the, the, pre the pressure is going to increase. So it's the narrow because greater pressure is applied on the ground. That's why it will sink more than this wide one, which has a wide area because the pressure will be less. A car of mass 900 kg is at rest. Each of the each of its tires is in contact with 0 0.3 cubic uh, sorry 0 0.3 square meters of the ground. What is the total pressure exerted by the car? So the pressure will be equal to force over area, which will be the force which is mg because we've been given the mass over area. The force is 900 the mass times 10 over the area which is 0 0.3 so what is 900 times 10 over 0 0.3 that's a 9000 divided by 0 0.3 that's 30,000 pascals 30,000 pascals that's the pressure so the answer there is D 30,000 pascals the diagram below shows the apparatus used in an experiment to determine the specific latent heat of fusion for ice. The Joule meter is used to measure the amount of heat supplied to the ice. What other quantity must be measured in order to determine the specific latent heat of fusion? Uh, the formula for latent heat, we all know it's energy over mass. So in order to determine the specific latent heat of fusion, then we need the energy and mass. Already, we already have a Joule meter which is measuring the amount of heat energy. So what is, what is now needed is the mass of the melted ice for us to find the specific latent heat of fusion for ice. 4,200 joules, also the answer here is D, mass of the melted ice. 4,200 joules of heat energy is required to raise the temperature of four kilograms of a liquid by one degree Celsius. A further 3,300 joules of heat energy is required to change a unit mass of the same substance from liquid to vapor at the same temperature. Which of the following statements is correct? The heat capacity of the Substance is 4,200 joules. Well, heat capacity is the temperature required to change the is the energy required to change the temperature of a one kilogram substance by one degree or one Kelvin. But here we are dealing with four kilograms. So 4,200 4, joules is changing four kilograms, not one, one kilogram. So the specific heat capacity in this case should be the 4,200 divided by four, which is, which is 1,050. That will be the, the, the heat capacity, not 4,200. So the A is wrong. Substance is impure water. We can't know if it's impure water because we've not been told the boiling point or, the, or, the, or anything, or, the, or any, any temperature. So we can't say it's just impure water like that. And then the latent heat of the 
substance is 13,200. No, because the latent heat is the energy, the energy over the mass. And if we calculate the energy over the mass, the energy supplied was 3,000, 3,300 over the mass, which is 4. It will give us 825. So that's not correct. So in this case, the answer will be D. The whole substance requires 7,500 joules to change to vapor. Because 4,200 was applied here, and then a feather, 3,300 was applied here. And if you add the two, it will give you 7,500. So the answer is D. A hot liquid was poured in a beaker. The graph below shows how temperature of the liquid changes as it cools to room temperature. So what's the question? Uh, what is taking place at region X? What they want to know is what is taking place here. This is a hot liquid. It's a hot liquid, and then it's changing. The liquid changes as it, as it the, how the temperature of the liquid changes as it cools to room temperature. So we've not been given the which type of a substance is this. Uh, substances freeze at different boiling points. Oh, sorry, at different freezing points. So some some would even freeze at room temperature and some cannot. So we can't know which one is this. But since it's cooling, meaning it's a li it's a liquid. So here they are saying condensation. So condensation is the change of state from gas to liquid. So it cannot change from gas to liquid here. So the, uh, the liquid changes as it cools to room temperature. So this is the liquid, and then it's cooling. So what is taking place at at X? So at X, we can say it's solidification and evaporation, which is D, because it's changing. When the temperature is decreasing and then you notice a constant temperature somewhere, then there the, 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 the is a change of state. So it's changing from liquid to solid. So solidification is going on. But the evaporation is from the temperature of the outside. So it's evaporating in some way, but it's solidification and evaporation. So the answer is D. So the answer on question 16 is D, solidification and evaporation. A copper rod is heated on one end. Which statement describes how heat transfer occurs in the rod? Copper atoms move from the cooler end to the hotter end, from hotter end to cooler end, vibrate more on the cooler end, than the hotter end, vibrate more. So the answer is D. Vibrate more at the hotter end than the cooler end because the heat, when, when heat is applied, the atoms are given more kinetic energy, which makes them vibrate more where it's hot than when, where it's cool. So the answer is D. The copper atoms vibrate more at the hotter end than the cooler end. The diagram below shows the sound wave as seen on, a, on an oscilloscope. The period is 5.0 times 10 to the power negative 9, and the speed of sound is 400 meters per second. Find the frequency, wavelength, distance, and amplitude of the wave. So we are first going to find the, the frequency. So, so the frequency is equal to 1 over the period t. And this will be equal to 1 over, what is the period? 5.0 times 10 to the power negative 9. So this will be times 10 to the power negative 9 to be 2.0 times 10 to the power 8. That's the frequency. And then let us find the wavelength since we already have the velocity. The velocity is equal to frequency times lambda, which is the wavelength. The wavelength will be equal to the velocity 400 meters per second over the frequency 2.0 times 10 to the power 8. This is in per second. So 400 divided by this, 400 divided by 2.0 times 10 to the power 8, it will be 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 6. And then we can even find, okay, for the amplitude, we can just look at the, the diagram itself for the amplitude. So since this is the crest and then the trough is here, then if we cut the center, that's the line where the, where the wave is passing. So this divide by, divided by two will be the amplitude and it will, it will be five volts. So the amplitude is five volts. And then now we should find the distance. Yeah. So in this case, the answer for equation 18 is A. This, this one, frequency 2.0 times 10 to the power 8, yeah, the answer is A. 
a wave of frequency 13,000 Hz travels 1,300 meters in four seconds. What is the wavelength of the wave? So we've been given the frequency and then we've been given the distance and time. We're going to find the speed and then use the, the speed and the frequency to find the wavelength using the wave equation. So let's just solve that. So first we are going to find the speed. V is equal to the distance given 1,300 meters over four seconds. And this will be equal to 325 meters per second. And then the wave equation is V is equal to F lambda, which is the wavelength. So the wavelength will be equal to velocity 325 meters per second over the frequency, which is 13,000 13, hertz. Lambda will be equal to 325 divided by 13,000. That will be 0 0.025 meters. So the answer is A. On question 19, the answer is A, 0 0.025 meters. The following diagrams represent four sound waves. Which of the waves may be dangerous to the human eye? Human ear, sorry. Uh, so the waves which are dangerous to you, human uh, human ears are ultrasonic sounds, and ultra, ultrasonic sounds have got the highest frequency. And when you look at this, this one is the one with the highest frequency because there are more more waves coming in just a few seconds. A few seconds. So that's the that's that's the that's the that's where the frequency is high. So since it's high, this one is the answer. It will be dangerous because this one can be on a wave which has got a higher frequency and can be termed a ultrasonic maybe. Yeah. So the answer is A over there. A with the highest frequency because higher frequencies are, are dangerous to the human ear.